let it rain. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let it rain. And open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. And open the floodgates of heaven. Come on and worship Him with us. Let it rain. We love you, Lord Jesus. Come on. Let it rain. Sing it. Open the floodgates of heaven. Sing it to Him. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Thank you, Jesus. Open the floodgates of heaven. Sing it, touch. Let it rain. Come on. Let it rain. And open the floodgates of God of power. God of, you are awesome. Sing it. You're God of power. Lord of glory. Come and feel this place because you are awesome. You're God of power. You're the Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. You are awesome. God of power. Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. You are awesome. God of power. You're the Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. You are awesome. You're my God of power. You're the Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. You are awesome. God of power. Lord of glory. Come and feel this place. Sing it, church. You are awesome. God of power. You're the Lord of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. Minister to them. Touch them. Strengthen them. Work in their lives. Restore their joy. Give them their peace back, Lord. Give them their sound mind back. Some of you tuning into this broadcast have been under attack in your mind. But the Holy Ghost is restoring your peace. We declare over your life, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and declare it over yourself, over your house, over your marriage, over your health, over your finances, over your business, over your career over your future somebody declare it peace be still in the name of jesus christ the son of god the word of god declares thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee father we thank you for hearing us in jesus name we pray somebody say amen Men, good morning to you, saints of the Most High. So glad to be back with you again as we continue our series. God never fails. He never, ever, ever fails. 
I want to take you into the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. The children of Israel, they were facing a demonic onslaught, a terrible attack from a wicked king by the name of Nahash. The word Nahash literally means serpent, which shows that he was certainly used by the great serpent called the devil himself. Amen? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. The children of Israel, their backs were against the wall. Verse 1 says, Then Nahash, the Ammonite, came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. The devil's always trying to get you to, he's always trying to get you to negotiate and come down to his level, but the devil is a liar. You got to have your mind made up. I ain't serving you come hell or high water. Rain, snow, or sunshine, we still ain't going to serve you. We are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ and to our God and him only will we serve. Amen. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them on the this condition, on this condition. Now, it's sad because the men of Jabesh said, make a covenant with us and we will serve you. So they were, they were actually lowering their standards. They were compromising. They were not putting their faith in God. Are you hearing me? So they wanted to, you can't negotiate with the enemy. He'll, he will never come to your terms. The devil is a lie. You can't believe a thing he says. And so Nahash said, on this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may gouge out or thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for reproach upon all Israel. So he wanted to really paralyze them. The men in the military would use their right eye to pair over their shields to be able to see the enemy in the distance. So if he, would, if he were able to gouge out their right eyes, well, then he got them defeated forever. Are you listening to me? The devil is a liar. That's why you can't negotiate with him. Because he, if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. They, the men of Jabesh is begging, saying, make a covenant with us so we can become your servants. And he's saying, no, that ain't good enough. Only way I'll make a covenant with you if you let me just take something and just stab your right eye out. Well, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> That's going to bring the war out of me. That'll bring the worry out of me right there. You want to do what to who? Uh... You got the wrong guy now. Now you asking for it. Now you got a fight on your hand. Hello? <laughs> now watch this. Verse 3 says, And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, They had sense here, Give us seven days. Ah, now they dial in God's number. <laughs> you know, seven is God's number for completion, right? Now they dial in. Now they're about to bring God on the scene. They said, give us seven days respite. We need seven days that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. If there be no one to save us, you can do with us what you want. I dare someone to open your mouth and say, big time help is on the way. Come on, somebody. Big time help is on the way. God ain't about to let you go under. If God be false, who can be against us? Come on, somebody. If you go under, it's, it will tarnish his name and his character. But God is our deliverer. My, my, my. He always comes through. Whether you, he come through in a way you didn't expect him to. Or come on, somebody. God comes through for his people. Can someone open your mouth and say, God never fails. He never fails. Watch this. Then came the messengers of Gibeah of Saul. Now you got to remember, Saul had just been anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and 10. And Samuel told him, as the Spirit of God move on you and as occasion serve you, do what you're supposed to. He was freshly anointed, so he was just learning. 
how to flow with the Holy Ghost. And God always have a man. God always, he always have somebody that he can call. Are you following me? Then came the messengers of, to Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. When they heard the news that we only got seven days, and if somebody don't stand up for us, it's over. Nahash is gone. God, he's going to defeat us. He's going to pluck out the eyes of the right men, and he's going to steal our women and rape our wives and our daughters. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? So when the people heard that they only had seven days or they going to lose everything, they started weeping and crying out. Verse 5 says, And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? What's got these people so stressed out? What's going on here? And the Spirit of God. Now trouble is now. I'm telling you now the table is about to take a turn for the better. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings and his anger was kindled greatly. That's one of the things. You know the Holy Ghost can raise up a righteous anger in you. The Spirit of God came on Saul. My God. The Bible says, And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one accord. Now what a strange thing for him to do. He took a yoke of oxen. He didn't do this until the Holy Ghost came on him. He took an oxen and chopped it in pieces and said, Look, he sent it throughout all the coast of Israel. He said, if you don't stand up, this will be your animal. Your animal will be sliced in pieces tomorrow. But it was, you know, God doesn't always use things that make sense to us. God doesn't always use human reasoning. Think about it. He tell Moses, stretch out his rod. And what happens? The Red Sea open wide. You know what? I ain't trying to make sense. I'm trying to get results. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to obey God. I want results. And if it means you just got to look like a fool, well, then let's look like a fool and get the results that we are believing God for. Come on, somebody say amen. So the Bible says, when they saw what Saul did, they all came out with one consent. The fear of the Lord fell on the people. And Lord, have mercy if there is ever a time we need the fear of God to, to fall on a group of people. It's these last wicked days that we are living in. We need the fear of God back into the church. Are you hearing me? People are making fun of the church. People are disrespectful to men, real men and women of God. People are taking the things of God for granted. We need a move of the Holy Ghost to shake people awake, to shake them up and let them realize if you don't repent, you're going to bust hell wide open. We need a move of God to wake people. People up. People are acting like there is no God, like there is no eternity, like there is no hell to shun in heaven to gain. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to shake these countries. Are you listening to me? Listen to this. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah, 30,000. That, that's a move of God. God brought 330,000 people together without a cell phone, <laughs> without the internet, without a telephone line, without AM and FM, without shortwave radio. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost stirred the people up, and those men realized it's now or never do or die, sink, or swim. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. It's do or die, sink, or swim, now or never. I'm talking to somebody. There comes a time when you got to take a stand. Here am I, Lord. 
Somebody lift your hands to heaven. Say, here am I, Lord, send me. I make myself available to you. Those men, 330,000, they said, here we are. We are available to you. Do with us what you want, God. We surrender ourselves. Now watch this. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall you say unto the men of Jabez Gilead. I dare someone to say good news is on the way. I dare somebody to say good news is on the way. Big time help is on the way. Watch this. Listen to the message they said to the men of Jabesh Gilead who were about to be defeated by Naash. Tomorrow, I tell you I love when God gives me a 24-hour miracle, a 24-hour breakthrough. Tomorrow, by that time the sun is hot, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Glory to God. Their backs were against the wall. God couldn't take a whole week like they were asking for. God needed to move now. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You need God to move now. Reminds me of the lady who came to church who was needed prayer, believing God for her son to get his passport because they were just turning her around and nothing was working. We join our faith with that woman in church and we call out to God and we prayed in the name of Jesus. You got to get heaven involved. Sometimes you need other people to join faith with you. And the following Sunday, that lady came back to testify. She said, Pastor Sean, you prayed for us on Sunday and God showed up. And the next day, my son got his passport. Oh, come on, somebody. My son got his American passport. Lord, have mercy. I pray for you under the sound of my voice that everything the devil have held up, I command him to loose it in the name of... Take your filthy hands off of God's people. Take your hands off their stuff. Get out the way in the name of Jesus. I dare someone to say, loose it, devil, in the name of Jesus. Turn it loose. Many of you dealing with immigration, believe in God to get your permanent, re your permanent resident or your citizenship. Some of you believe in God for things that's been held up. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I believe the devil's turning it loose right now. Somebody ought to sh I feel someone sh I, I saw a woman just begin to jump and shout and scream and hold her head and spin around in a house and weep under the anointing of God. Turn it loose, devil, in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of that stuff. You can't hold it up another second in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off. I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Every principality, every power, every rule of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high places, loose it in Jesus' name. The message went out. Tomorrow! By the time the sun is hot, you're going to have help. Can someone lift your hands to heaven and say, big time help is on the way? Can someone lift your hands to heaven and say, big time help is on the way? Watch this. Therefore, the men of Jabesh said, tomorrow we will come out. Now they're going to fool, they're going to deceive the enemy. They said, tomorrow we will come out unto you and you shall do with us what same. You can do with us what you want. Because they know help was on the way. They know he wasn't going to have his opportunity. And the Bible says in verse 11, And it was on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies. And they can remember Saul's moving under the anointing and direction of the Holy Ghost. And they came into the midst of the host. They came in the midst of the enemy in the morning watch and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered so that two of them were not left together. The Bible says your enemy will come against you one way, but he will flee from you seven different ways. Seven! We serve a miracle-working God. 
he stepped in on their behalf and he turned it around. The odds were stacked against them, but God turned the tables in their favor. They got a breakthrough. They walked away with the victory. They walked away as more than a conqueror. Somebody put your hands together and give our God praise. Glory to God. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it on your smart devices. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. Our ministry Venmo account address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. To your viewing audience and our wonderful partners, may Pastor Amy will never, ever take you for granted. You are awesome. We love all of you. We appreciate you. And just know, we're about to make some announcements about Three Nights of Miracles. Amen. We love you. See you again on tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless. Bye-bye.